Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Get, Get Your, Your Chocolate, Chocolate On. Hi, I'm Dr. Amanda Kemp. And I'm Miss Makeda. And this episode of Get Your Chocolate On is sponsored by Racial Justice from the Heart which is a education and consulting company that helps us to have profound human connections and stand for justice. Yes, I know that's right. Thank you. Oh, I, like that. I like that. I like that uh, affirmative response to it. Oh, yeah. So here we are. It's Thursday and it's 3.30. So I wonder who's going to be joining us today online. I have to say, Makeda, I did forget to email 20,000 people. But... <laughs> But I hope some of our faithful list watchers and listeners are out there. So I mean, you know what? The less people that are here, the more intimate it is. So Oh, I know what you're saying. Let's get cozy, everybody. Let us get cozy. All right. Okay, so what's our theme for today, sister? Our theme today is enjoying yourself, enjoying life. Wow, you changed the world. How to. It's mm. a how to today. Mm. And we've sort of got this. We've honed in, sort of focused on black self-care in particularly, because mm -hmm. this is Get Your Chocolate On. Right. And um, we found a lot, but first I thought we could just both sit and reflect and talk about the ways in which we, what, do you, what are small things you do that make your life better, that make it more enjoyable? Oh, small things. Or it can be anything, big, whatever. Big or small things. Well, you know, big things are hard to do during COVID. But smaller big things that I do to make my life enjoyable right now. A bath. It's and I so have to enjoyable. say, I have to say, I wish we could have more hot water in our house. Oh man, me too, mom. It's, it's just, I mean, can I mean, you know what I'm saying? That bath gets like half full and then the cold water comes. Yeah. So that I don't know what we can do about that. Girl, I don't know either. That we can is, talk to the house manager. At this point, we really are boiling water and putting it in the tub. Yes. Like the medieval days. Yes. So anyway, a hot bath is definitely something. Um, and I'll say this. I did it today and I did it yesterday. I There's a, a black woman who leads a body scan meditation on YouTube. So I just click on her. And I let her do the work, and I just listen. Sometimes I just lay down. I know. And I listen. And I'll do it twice because you know I might nap on the first one. Um, but that That's does good. make me feel a little relaxed. And um, I find that if I take a relaxed break in the middle of the day, or you know, at some point during the day, I'm not so wound up at night. Oh yeah. And then work, which leads to me having sleep problems. I kind of feel the same way. Sometimes if you spend too much time focused. You're it, and you step away for a second, you're like, whoa, my head was just like spinning. Mm. Now what? Now what? Mm. Um, honestly, I get that feeling when I, watch, when I binge watch TV. <laughs> I'm not busy too much. But so one of the ways I have written down yes. <laughs> that I enjoy. I like, hope binge TV watching is on your list. I'm sure it's enjoyable, but isn't it also numbing? Yeah, I, I don't have it written down. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Go ahead. What's on your list? Finding pleasure in the mundane things. Like? So, uh, washing the dishes. I've noticed I enjoy washing dishes only when I'm by myself. Because otherwise someone might comment, oh, Makeda's doing the dishes. Oh, Makeda, thank you for doing the dishes. And that just makes it a task, a chore. But when I'm by myself, it's not about, it's like I've never washed dishes before. I'm enjoying the soap. I'm scraping the food off. I'm watching a dirty thing become clean. And it's just relaxing. I put some music on. And you just, you know, kind of vibe and you wash the dishes. Wow. Do you realize this is so funny because one of um, my colleagues and friends, Dr. Isha Vela, she says that pleasure is something we give to ourselves. It's not yeah. something that we have to buy or it's not something that uh, we have to somehow entice other people to give to us, which is kind of how women, I think, are programmed to think about pleasure. We get the right partner and then you can get pleasure. Yeah. But anyway, Dr. Isha said exactly that. She said, you can feel pleasure in everyday things. Like, really feel the soap and the water when you're washing the dishes. Just be mindful of your mindset when you go into it. Is it, oh, I have to wash the dishes. This that's thing how is I feel about it. Yeah, and I mean, that's how your brain tends to go about it when you see it. Yeah. But then you can think, oh, well, now I get to, like, listen to music, listen to my songs, and wash the dishes. And... I like to sing and I like to keep my hands moving, so that's a good. 
Wow. A great combo for me. That, who would have thought? I have to say it. I'm going to give that a try. It's nice. Yeah. Oh, I just also want to announce, because we said we would do this, that, you know, Get Your Chocolate On is here in Lancaster, PA. We're in the city of Lancaster right now. And so we are on historic Lenape and Susquehanna people's land. So we just want to always acknowledge that because we had a show right before Thanksgiving with one of our guests was a, um, a member of the Native American Indigenous First Nations community. And, you know, she encouraged us to do that. Shout out. Shout out, Jennifer <laughs> Valoya. <laughs> Look, Faith Wolner is here. And she says, the present moment is what matters, being fully present. That's what I'm really, I've really been trying to get into that recently. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, finding pleasure in the mundane, washing dishes, cleaning my room. A lot of cleaning stuff I actually I know. Do, this I girl, I was in her room last night. It was so cozy Yay. and comfortable. <laughs> and, uh, I really do try. I really it, just, do. it was actually a, a, um, aesthetically pleasing to be in your room. Yeah, you you know, because you can have a clean space and have it like not really feed Sit you. Well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you, you're, you're. I'm. I. My room is not aesthetically pleasing. No. It doesn't feed me. My bedroom right now. <laughs> no, no. Anyway, go to Makeda. Lead the way, girl. You okay. are leading. Ah, okay. I'm just gonna run through these other two because we actually kind of have a lot to get through today. Okay. Um, Expressing gratitude is something that just makes me automatically enjoy life a little more and you can do that anytime while you're driving. Sometimes if I'm kind of feel myself like catching road rage when I'm driving, I just kind of slow down, ask myself why I'm rushing and then kind of remind myself why I enjoy being alive. Sometimes I'm just like, wow, I'm so grateful I have this car. I wouldn't want to wreck it. Let me drive slower. <laughs> Things like that, you know? And then of course... <laughs> Being flexible with myself, and when I don't get everything I need to get done, mm. it's already not done. So I just, I used to be really hard on myself, and that would just make everything kind of worse. Really? I would, because I would immediately, my next thought would be, I'm a failure. Okay, maybe that's dramatic, but that's how you feel. Yeah. You kind of just feel like, it's oh, almost I an automatic thought. Yeah, it's, I failed at something. Mm -hmm. And it's okay to say, okay, we will try again tomorrow. And instead of my brain reeling and going, well, what does that mean? What does that say about my future? Where does that leave me in 10 years if I can't do this right now? Literally. And then that sends me spiraling. I get so anxious, picture myself homeless. <laughs> I'm telling you guys that the thoughts, my mom always tells me your brain is not your friend. Yes. And so I've kind of, I've been learning not to trust my first instinct as much because I have to accept the fact that my brain has been colonized in a sense. And so my first instinct might not be the best instinct. <laughs> Can I just say, wow? Dropping gems today. I'm telling you, Makeda, what the H? Okay. And now, wait, 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 before you go on, I just want to, I just want to, um, I don't know, hell yeah you on the, uh, the colonized brain and the colonized mind. And some people also call it the conditioning. Yeah, the that's first thing that word. comes up might be your conditioning. But if you yes. pause, take a breath, ask yourself a question, why the heck am I worrying, hurrying so much? Woo. You know, let me tell you, my biggest mistake for so long was thinking that the first thought that came to my head was my gut telling me what to do. Mm. I thought it was like, oh, if it pops in your head without you thinking, that's your gut knowing what to do. Mm. But that's not really the case, is it? Mm. Any wild thought can come up first. Wow. Any old thing. Wow. Someone else's thought can up. just come up in your head. So, okay. Good point. But that's a perfect segue, actually. Okay. Conditioned minds and whatnot. Yes, yes. So, my mom wanted to have me look into people, especially black people, finding ways to relax. And there's, um, I forget the name, but someone out there is doing a napping ministry um, for black folks, indigenous folks. Mm. Um, black and indigenous folks, I mean. Hmm. Oh, I guess I had it on my computer, but that's okay. So he's talking about how our mind is sort of, we're used to thinking that working and moving forward is the best way to do things and get things done in terms of protest, social change. We have that capitalist mindset. Don't mm. stop working. You'll get somewhere if you just keep working. Mm. And his argument is that rest is like, 
a, a form of protest in itself. Mm. And you can find reparations in resting. Ooh. Reparations in, in resting. I was that. I caught that. Reparations in and resting. And I've been saying he. It's a black woman that actually came up with this idea. Reparations in resting. Uh-huh. You want to say more about it? Well, can one I last it? thing. Yeah. He's, and she's saying, when I had first brought this idea up, it sort of got the ball rolling and suggesting, why don't we take a nap? Some people started, got really emotional about it, started crying oh about it, God, saying, I so never thought tired. of that. Yeah, and it's like, yeah, yeah, a nap would be amazing right now. Oh you know? my gosh. You know, I, um, yeah, wow. I, I just want to, um, you know, echo what you were talking about because under capitalism if we're not being productive it's almost like we don't have a right to be yes you know we're That's not we're not pulling our weight like. we're you and know. in the black community that is kind of a big theme often the whole are you pulling your weight yeah thing. in I mean, households that's big it's true i know i, don't know. I grew up like, like that i mean a lot of people did well the way i grew up was um you know at, after a certain age, like maybe five or seven, if you weren't doing something when grown-ups walked in the room, they gave you something to do. Mm -hmm. Like relaxation. I you mean, know. That, that is definitely probably a post-traumatic slave syndrome. I think so. It's like a holdover. And when you get to a certain age, that's working age. <laughs> but that's also, I guess, any American farming family, anyone that's with that true. history. That's true, and I'm thinking about um, the Protestant work ethic. Have you heard of that? No. Protestant work ethic. So it's this um, idea that this guy, Max Weber, came up with saying that there's a whole ideology around work in the United States mm -hmm. um, where to be a good Christian, you have to constantly be working hard. Mm -hmm. Because if you had idle hands, those were the devil's hands. Oh, I've heard that. I've heard that before. one. And when Europeans went over to other parts of the world where there's a whole culture of rest, um, they saw it as laziness. Yeah. And they saw it as proof that we needed to be colonized. And so we have, like you said, post-traumatic slave syndrome. We incorporated that in. And um, so how do we let that go? I know. I mean, I was actually <laughs> going to say this before we even got into the whole um, resting ministry thing, mm -hmm. napping ministry thing, is that one way you could really enjoy your day more if you have a more flexible schedule, you're self-employed, is putting, giving yourself space for an afternoon nap. Because naps can really change the way your day feels, how time feels, how a 24 or 18 hour day Feels. You can split it up into two whole days almost. That's what it feels like for me at least. Wow. And it's when you're working, at least like the hours I used to do, nine to five, it can be hard to get that. You Well, you can't you if can't. you're at work. You can't. There's no time. I mean, you hardly even had a lunch break at your job. Yeah, that's true. And that's why I loved a six to two because I would just get up, be groggy, whatever. And by the time I leave at 2, I have space for an afternoon nap. And if I needed to do something afterwards, I had the energy to do it. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, I didn't, so I didn't. But. You know, sometimes, thinking, speaking about that energy thing, sometimes I think about... So I grew up in foster care, and I think about uh, my foster mother didn't have a car. Mm -hmm. And so to take us to the doctor or to these different appointments that she... She had several of us. We, we went on public transportation or to go to the supermarket, we, we walked, you know, quite a few blocks and mm -hmm. pulled a car. I'm just, why did I bring this up? We're talking about something you said about if you, you have a chance, oh, energy. So, you know, if you have a job, like anything like the one that you were describing, and then you have to, you know, be, you have kids at home, maybe you get your kids at home doing distance learning right now. And then you have that house. I mean, I'm just saying. Then you got to take people to appointments and, and if to you dance don't have class. a car, that is really well. That's crazy. really rough. But even if you do, think about how often we were just running around tired, ragged, ragged, and, and tired. That, and when you're tired, there's no time to enjoy the mundane. That no. is also the point. You're you right. Just, it's not on your mind, and it doesn't feel good when you do it. Yeah, it doesn't click correctly. Yeah, I guess. it just feels like, oh, you know, now I'm in my second shift of the day. How long till I can get to my bed? I mean, you think wow. about that pillow. Yes. I know. Kind of like suffering through our days. Yes. Mm. So, 
the point of all that is to say, if you be flexible with yourself, be gentle, allow yourself to take a nap. Yeah. Now, I had another, in terms of protests, they aren't as raging as they were previously, but another piece of advice a black columnist gave us was to live vicariously through your friends or frontliners who are protesting. If you know that you don't have that energy in your, but you're feeling guilty about that, don't let that guilt get to you. Take the time, so try to show love to the protesters that are on the front line. Try to be that support system for them so they can be the support system for all of us. Hmm, I like that. Me too, it's a good idea. It is a good, like I sometimes, I even put this in the emails to like thousands of people. I'll be like, P.S. Prayer Warriors get into action. You know, and some people write me back. They're like, I'm on it, Amanda. And I'm like, thank God. There's some serious prayers. Yes. Yeah. You know, yes, um, sure. there, 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 there is a front line. <laughs> and there's a spiritual line. Right? Yes. And sometimes, sometimes the front line is where there's a lot of spiritual work happening. But sometimes that spiritual work is happening behind the scenes, yeah. too. So um, I like what you said about not dwelling on guilt, but sending the energy to the frontline people, sending the money to the frontline people. Money works too, yeah. <laughs> sending money to frontline people. That's you know, such flowers, a good point. flowers. Somebody, a friend of mine, sent me an email. Um, I think it was after George Floyd died, not died, was killed, or something, you know. And she was like, "Girl, what can I send you? <laughs> which, which, what you want?" And I was like, how sweet is that? You know? And I was like, yes. flowers. You know what I mean? I yes. just want to be reminded of beauty. And um, so she asked me, which is beautiful, and I let her give to me, yeah. which is beautiful. And then she delivered, because I did get yeah, some. Yeah, thank Can you, you know, imagine? I mean, I could see if she did deliver it, honestly. It would be disappointing. But she did. But she did. That's, that's how I feel like. The energy level doesn't always have to be completely up, but initiative goes a long way too. Yeah, asking somebody, what can I, what can I give what can you? I That's give radical. You. That is that is amazing. I mean, I could have said anything. I could have said, well, could you call, you know, Lori so I can get a massage? Can you pay for the massage? I mean, her answer could have been yes or no, or I'll do half, whatever you know, because Lori's expensive. Lori, <laughs> but um. Yeah, so I really appreciate that thing about sending the energy to the front line, to the people you know who are hurting the most right now. Yes. Um, I guess I was also thinking about, and this I think is for people of different racial backgrounds, for European Americans, other people of color. Um, you know, that Protestant work ethic is something that white Protestantism sort of came up with to use against other people of European descent in addition to people of color who they then run around the world and colonize. So I really think, I really think a lot of us need to decondition, you know, decolonize. Oh, something about that just made me feel so calm and relaxed for really? a second. Really? When yeah. I said a lot of us need to decondition? If we all just did it and just kind of Let's just, yeah. embrace or just, I don't know what mindset we'd be moving into, but moving out of the mindset that production and work is always the best. Yeah, and you for know, us. right? Like the best thing you can do for yourself is to work. Yeah, or it's not always true. Be productive. Be productive. That's you know, the better word because be you can be working and not be productive. Yeah, and you'll probably be hard on yourself for it. Yeah, but I was thinking you can also do work that's reproductive, like napping. Yes. You said cleaning your room. Yeah, Those are all things that like, they're kind of inside your space mm -hmm. and they're taking care of yourself. And they feed you. They feed you. They, it, it's so, you know, it's not external work. Yeah. But it still is valuable. Amen. That's a good way to put it. Yeah. And it's a good way for you to value yourself, whoever you are. So I wonder if we should tell you, we, we want to, um, <laughs> today we want to do a giveaway. Yeah. <laughs> so it looks like we have six people viewing right now. So um, could you please put in the chat um, your favorite way to um, enjoy, enjoy, enjoy yourself? Yes. It, it, enjoy, give yourself pleasure, receive pleasure. Put something in the chat because um, 
we're going to pick a random number and um, Makeda's going to send you a book. And, and it's all about cultivating pleasure. Yes, it's a book. Is that the word cultivating? Yeah, cultivating. Okay, yeah, good. yeah, I know. You're just 100% today. <laughs> so this book that we're going to read um, throughout the rest of the month is called Pleasure Activism. And it's by Adrienne Marie Brown. And we want you to read along with us so that each week, because there's six principles, it's called um, Pleasure Activism. And in it, she talks about six principles for cultivating pleasure as you work to make change. And so each week we'll probably talk about one principle. And, um, and so we would love for you to read along with us. So go ahead and put, um, what should they put in the, ch uh, oh yeah. Put, uh, put ways. What's your favorite way to enjoy life? Yes. In the chat. Yes, yes. If you put something like that and then... That will immediately enter you in. That will immediately enter you in and um, and then, you know, you'll send us your... Privately, you'll send us your mailing address and we'll send the book on to you. So while they're doing that, Makeda, is there oh anything else? Uh, is there anything else on your little list? Yes, actually... I got some self care tips here. Okay, there. some self care tips. Boom, boom. Try reading hopeful texts by black authors. Oh, yeah. Read hopeful, yeah. hopeful hope. texts. I like that. Not always, you know. Don't know. Oh, I, you know what? I was mentoring this woman, friend of mine, total hardcore activist. And she was telling me what she was reading before going to bed. I was like, I don't think you should be reading all this. this is European American. I was like, I don't think you need to read all that stuff before you go to bed. Right it's, before bed. It's just yeah. making you feel bad. I was like, what makes you feel good? And she was like, poetry, walking, but I don't feel like I can take a break because, you know, black people can't take a break. And I was like, well, I disagree. <laughs> I think black people can and should take a break. And the fact that that's a radical statement is like, what is yeah. what's going on yeah 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 so okay, read, read so what was your comment oh okay you sorry. said read hopeful yeah hopeful text by black authors. hopeful text by black authors so yes please do that stay away from the news and social media or stop limit your access to it i had to turn my news notifications off my phone because i just kept getting notifications like young man stabbed and i'm like what <laughs> Why is this just like a notification like somebody's texting me negative energy all the time? I just don't want to <laughs> read it. Good for you. And I want you, don't feel guilty for turning off that stuff. Yeah. This is what psychologists are telling us to do. So we do need to hear it. We don't need to hear it like notifications. Notifications. And, and every day yeah. and you know. Yeah, unless you're in very into politics, whatever. I don't see a point. Okay, we have talking to close friends on the phone every day. That's mm. maybe not for everybody, but I know someone like me, I'm very in denial about um, how lonely I can get sometimes. Mm. Sometimes I don't even really recognize that that's what it is mm. until I'm on the phone with my friends and I remember what it feels like to be connected mm. with others, you know? Yeah. That feels nice. Yeah. We have nourishing your body, mm -hmm. of course. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Doing at least one self-care act each day. Mm -hmm. And I love that that could be anything. Meditating and hugging your children. Ooh. And the same time? <laughs> that's all the same thing? Yeah, that's what it says. Wow, I, I like hug that. and squeeze my twins. This is very therapeutic for me. They bring me hope. Mm. Or it could be your pets. <laughs> yeah, no, that's what I, I mean, do. Sometimes our kids are very stressful. Yeah, that's yeah. true. And they, they don't want to be too close. And maybe they don't want to be hugged or they're out doing their thing. They're not available. So. Not me, though. No, we can't even have a life. <laughs> okay. Sometimes you're not around. We have two enter entries into our contest. Oh, so oh. only two? I thought there were more. Mm -mm. So we have walk in the beautiful sunshine, especially oh, yes. near water. On the canal, beach, and street. Yeah, Deb, thank you for that. And we have, I use, oh, I walk my dog twice a day and use it as a mindfulness practice, really using all my senses to appreciate the environment in which we are walking. Yeah, that is so good. Both of these are like outdoors kind of things. Because outdoors is nice. You don't really receive anything bad from the outside. 
So, Makita, you were off camera. Nobody heard that. You don't receive anything from outside. I mean, from you do. Yeah, I mean it, but in a positive way. Like, you don't get the negative energy. Oh, my goodness. So, I, I, okay, I'm going to keep looking at the camera. We're going to flip to see who wins. The oh, giveaway. You're so, oh, look, Josie says you're so wise. You are wise. <laughs> Thank you, Josie. Okay, Shayna, is it how I said it? Shayna? I think so. Shana, you are heads. Deborah, you are tails. Okay, yay. Woo, woo, woo. We're flipping a virtual coin. Oh, uh, it's tails. So, Deborah. Deb, we're going to send you a copy of the book, Pleasure Activism by Adrian Marie Brown. So what we need to know is um, your mailing address and whether or not you want a e-copy, is that what you call it? A digital yeah, copy? a Kindle copy. A Kindle or... Or you can get a paperback. Or we'll send you a paperback. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so we want you to read along. And thank you so much, um, Shana, for participating, or Shana for participating. That's awesome. Um, we recommend everybody read along with us. So, Makita, thank you. You're welcome. I, I, I thank you all. I hope that we've sort of awakened your desire for some pleasure in your activism. This was a good conversation. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I know. You just came with the knowledge today. Guys, I was on today. That's what happens when you, you know, when you're in a funk and then you hop back in your planner. Oh, there's nothing like it. She yeah. hopped back into her planner. That is it. awesome. <laughs> um, Makeda, where should Deb Kilmer, can we give her your email address yes. so she'll email you? I'm going to pin my email address in here okay. and just shoot me an email. I'll probably recognize the name. Okay. And I will then forward you your Amazon confirmation. Okay, so while Makeda is writing that, you thank you, Shana. Uh, we're, we're you're welcome. We're glad to be here for you and for each other, because this was like a nice little break in our day. Yes, and now I am late. She does I have to go to her go. appointment. Okay, bye everybody. Just remember, keep getting your chocolate on at least once a week in some way. Give yourself something sweet. Don't forget to email me. Right. That's okay, right. Good. Okay. Bye. Okay. Bye. bye. See ya.